everyone, so this is going to be my products of 2013. So these are the things I was loving and enjoying all through the year. Just to let you know that it's going to be a change in the video because this part is being recorded again because I actually deleted the first part of the video so there's going to be like a change in the video so just letting you know in advance. So I'm just going to go straight into it. I don't really have that many products this year. I am planning on trying new things. I just felt like I had a lot of makeup last year and I didn't want to spend too much on makeup. I wanted to use what I already had so I didn't really spend a lot on makeup last year but anyway the first thing will have to be concealers. I started using the brand LA Girl um, I was using their pro concealers and they look like this and I discovered this first, I think I just first discovered this on Beast Nation's channel it wasn't that popular on YouTube and then a lot of people started using it so I love it, it's really affordable, it's only $2.99 I think the two shades that I use are Fawn and Toast, Fawn is for my under eye concealer my under eye highlight and Toast is sometimes when I don't want to use NW45 by MAC it goes on really smooth and doesn't leave any crease lines and it just blends really well and I normally use the pointed foundation brush by Real Techniques to apply this definitely have a go using these concealers if you're looking for something very affordable and drugstore a blush I used a lot as well last year was the MAC Sweet as Cocoa blush and it looks like this it's a really nice neutral shade it's like a brown shade with a hint of slight, slight hint of pink and it really has a nice sheen to it. I started using it on my brides because I felt like it suited them a lot more than me but I saw how it had a nice glow, a really nice natural glow to their skin so I started using it on myself. Especially when I'm wearing bold lips as well, I always tend to go for this because it just gives a nice flush of colour without having too much on your face, on your cheeks. So Sweet as Cocoa if you're looking for a neutral colour that really suits dark skin. Another one that I reached for was the Sleek Blush by 3 palette in the shade Sugar and it comes with three shades. It's like it comes with like a corally peach shade, a rose goldy shade, and like a berry plummy shade. This was something I was using for every day when I didn't want to have too much going on because I was wearing a lot of coloured lipsticks and I wanted to keep my cheeks, you know, quite neutral. I think most of the time during the year my hair was blonde. I think I was blonde twice last year to, on two separate occasions so I was going towards more of the neutral shades, neutral blushes so those are the two that I was going for the most. I'm not sure if I mentioned this last year but I also was using the Wet n Wild gel liner. This is, I don't know what it's called but it's just in the shade black and this is like my favourite gel liner of all time. It's the blackest gel liner you'd ever come across for me anyway. I find it's also it's a lot blacker than Black Track by MAC and I don't even use that one I have. I bought it because of the hype but it just doesn't live up to what I want and I always, always go back and buy this. This was also from beautyjoint.com. I think I also bought the Naked 2 palette last year as well and I'm not a huge fan of the Naked palettes although I did buy all three. I did eventually sell my Naked 3 because I just knew I wasn't going to make much use out of it and I just thought I have similar shades like this and for 30, was it 42 pounds or 36 pounds I felt like it just wasn't, wasn't worth it so I sold it. I actually sold it for a little bit more than it actually cost right now which was, which was good I guess. If I had to pick between all three I would go for the Naked 2 mainly because of one of the shades in the palette which is the black shade and that's Blackout and it is the blackest, mattest black eyeshadow I've also come across as well. I feel like most black eyeshadows don't look really jet black, especially when you take a picture with flash and like even carbon by MAC isn't black enough, it feels like it has a bit of a tint, like a greeny tint, I can't explain it, but that's what I think. But this is the best. I, I don't know if they do this separately, like a separate shadow, but I would love to find out. And also sometimes on the palette I also go for like some shades for my like inner tear ducts. Half Baked, Chopper and maybe YGK. But besides those, I don't use the palette for anything else other than just to get the black eyeshadow. So another eyeshadow that you definitely heard me mention is Max Swiss Chocolate. And I use this as my transition colour for pretty much almost all of my tutorials and this is just a really nice medium brown. Another palette I used as well a lot last year was probably my Shaney Cosmetics palette. Excuse the messiness. has these two more of a bright shade and more of a neutral shade. I found myself reaching for this palette a lot more 
um, just because of all the bronzy shades and really, really nice like shimmery shades and yeah browns and greens and dark purples and I actually used it I actually used it a lot as well I actually used it a, I actually I actually used it a lot on I actually used it a lot on my I actually oh my god I actually used it a lot I actually, I actually used it a lot. I actually, I oh my Jesus God. <laughs> I actually used it a lot on my, I actually used it a lot on my brides. I used it a lot, I used it a lot, I used it a lot on my brides. I used it a lot on my brides as well. And I really like that palette. The Benefit Professional. And I use this more as a pore minimizing product, not, not so much a primer because it didn't work as a primer for me so I use this and I apply this on you know where my pores are really huge so I basically like my cheeks and like my nose and the way that I applied it was more of a like patting motion as opposed to you know rubbing it and I thought it worked quite well for that it reduced it definitely reduced my pores um, not completely but it definitely helped. They do have another one that's anti-aging and I do want to try that out as well. The next things are lipsticks and I do have quite a few, mainly by MAC, but the first one isn't a MAC product. This is the NYX MAC lipstick in Shocking Pink. This was meant to be a dupe to the MAC Candy Yum Yum. I did a tutorial and a dupes video on that lipstick and I came across quite a few lipsticks that were dupes. I actually prefer it to Candy Yum Yum just because it's more wearable and it's a lot more smoother on the lips sort of like a fuchsia pink yeah I wore this a lot during like, the summertime when my hair was dark as well it looks amazing especially with like a bronzy smoky eye I definitely want to try the other matte lipsticks from NYX as well because I really do like the formula and the other ones from MAC I've got quite a few actually first one is Riri Woo Riri Woo came out like three or four times with every launch and I happened to pick up a second one during the, you know, the Christmas launch. My favourite red lipstick before was Ruby Woo. I had a love-hate relationship with that lipstick because it was so, so drying. I don't even reach for that lipstick anymore. I like this one. I like how bright it is and how it's not drying. Another lipstick was Riri Boy. Also used quite a lot during the summer. And it's a really nice lavender purple. Similar to Up The Yam but a little bit darker. And I thought it was so so gorgeous. I wore this a lot as well. Then we have the all famous heroin, which is a purple lipstick. This is a matte lipstick, but it's not a drying. It's more it's more of those creamier mattes, but it's not as dry. It's not it's not as matte as the retro mattes. But um, this lipstick has now been made permanent. Not permanent yet in the UK. I think sometime this month it will come out online and in stores but they've made it permanent now so if you couldn't get it last year you could definitely get it now. I had two nude lipsticks. This one I didn't really wear much on camera. It was more like on a like day to day if I was just going out on errands and when it's something on my lips I went for touch. It is completely ruined right now so we can't even see it but it's a lustre finish. It's very very like sheer on the lips and it's, a, it's, it's really close to my lip shade. So I thought um, I would wear this. I'm not sure if you can tell on the camera, but this is my go-to nude, like nude lipstick in terms of like a nude brown. Another one was Velvet Teddy. This one was more like a night out kind of nude lipstick. It was like it's like a peachy nude. Looks like that. I do have videos on my nudes, so I'll definitely link that. So the lipstick I have on right now is Pleasure Bomb Riri Hearts Mac. I was able to get it. Um, on eBay, so I was quite happy about that. I don't really have that many matte, pink, like fuchsia pink lipsticks. So as you know, I do bleach and dye my hair a lot. So obviously when that happens, your hair does tend to get dry. So what I've been using, and also what I've started using as well, I mentioned this last year, but it was the Hydrating Macadamia Oil by Organics. I also came across, well I was sent this along with the Lumi Curl in One set. I was sent the Argan Oil as well. And this is also pretty good as well for keeping your um, keeping your hair frizz free and repairing to pretends and it just leaves the hair nice and soft and silky. This works really well. I find that when I curl my hair with their curling wand, my curls are not like smooth. 
So I definitely had to add this before I curl it and it's just nice and smooth and soft. Sometimes as well when my hair's wet, I would put a little bit of this and then blow dry it and it just works really well. So those two, like I said, I don't really use things. I don't use products on my hair unless it's like for, you know, washing and shampooing and stuff like that. Final thing is actually a body product and this is the Sally Hansen Airbrush Legs. I think I did an Instagram post last year. I'm not sure what I said about it, but I wasn't really like sold on it. But I started using it a lot last year because the one I was using, the Maybelline one, I got lost in the post. I would meant I yeah, I got lost in the post and um, I had to go out and buy this. And I used the Deep Glow shade and I actually really like it. Whenever I'm out, whenever I have like I'm wearing a short dress. I always use this on my legs and it's just so nice. Normally I would exfoliate, make sure you shave and exfoliate first. I normally put some like body cream first and then apply this and maybe a little bit of baby oil just because this dries like matte. So I'll put a little bit of baby oil on my legs just to keep it, you know, just to make it shiny. And this is my second bottle I bought this year so I've been using this a lot, I absolutely love it. So that's pretty much it for my favourites for 2013. I didn't try that many new products but I did Buy. I did buy quite a few things, but just not that many like new things. I do intend on trying out new brands. Instagram is really good for introducing you to new brands. There's one called Anastasia, you know, Anastasia Belly Hills. I really want to try that out as well. So I'll definitely keep you all posted as usual. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.